person, at least pretending to be an average citizen, right? So, and I'm following from the first in a maiden press conference yesterday, no one ever was able to confirm the pre-existing acknowledgement by the local police department when it comes to the danger of this perpetrator. He was actually, you know, just hiding in plain sight. He was not actually at least being detected by local police department because of his very suspicious behaviors or certain type of actions that might raise eyebrows of a certain low authorities, right? There was no indication, at least, at least during the first press conference yesterday. Maybe there could actually be more. I don't know. But Julian Cayenne said that, you know, immediately... Following from the first press conference, she kind of concluded that police department in the local area was not at all paying attention to him, or at least he was not surfacing. All right? He was not surfacing. That means that he was not looming large as a potential danger in the local region. So police have not been particularly alerted on this sicko, right? That's what she said. So, you know, we need to actually conduct a thorough inquiry into the possible criminal history of his. Was he ever been capable of doing something heinous? Like this kind of question. Has he ever committed any intolerable crime? Like this type of investigation that should be done this should be a focal point of the investigation in weeks and months to come, okay? And number two, how in the first place, you know, did he ever obtain the gun? And what kind of venues would he ever used? Would he ever ever used, I mean? I, I always actually had a tendency to soften things. Would have, you know, that's the, the reason I always, you know, pronounced them twice. To clarify the security issues, right? And, I mean, that means, you know, what type of, uh, yeah, I mean, how in the first place he would have obtained this gun would explain a lot about his attitude or even the loophole in the gun system. So we could possibly learn from this event so no one would easily obtain the gun. Then this would be the greatest prevention for a mass shooting and a massacre like this, right? But, you know, the thing is, Colorado is really notorious for loosening up regulations on gun possession as well as a drug usage, right? That's really the reason Colorado was the first one which has legalized recreational marijuana and so forth and so on. And then Colorado, unlike New York, especially New York City, has been known for having very lenient gun policy. That means anyone who is licensed to possess a weapon, yeah, one can easily obtain that. One can easily, um, yeah, upgrade one's gun license. Yeah, that means the ammunition can be easily purchased or be sold off if and only if this person somehow acquired the gun license, right? That's what has been said. I don't know what else I can say. Let me actually think about it. I don't really pretty much think about it. But anyway, the second question is how in the first place did he ever get this ammunition used in the crime? Who would actually give him an access? To ammunition like this? That's a real the question. And was he ever able to possess guns and ammunition? And uh, who would actually empower him to possess this? I mean, these type of uh, ballistics. That's a real the question, right? I mean, it's really important. We have to actually track down any type of uh, trails or traces left over by a perpetrator. So in that way, we can strengthen our legal system.
or we can actually you know, adopt more of a regulation so no uh, mentally disabled I mean, disabled or unstable person would it ever easily pick up the gun and go on mass shooting. All right, they should have never actually pulled the trigger. They should have never, at least, harm other people by having a slugfest. Then this type of situation should be prevented. The only way we can actually, you know, think of this situation is really adopting street gun laws, right? Preventing the people from concealing any weapons inside their pockets or preventing people from converting their plain rifle into a semi-automatic or even simply automatic rifle then this type of law should be adopted many of other local states have already uh, passed this kind of a bills so they are really legalized i mean i mean it, I mean, they're illegalized, that means um, no civilian can easily obtain a rifle with the purpose of turning that into a semi-automatic weapon. This type of behavior is uh, criminalized because the law has been adopted. The bill has a passed. That means that this type of legal recognition has been institutionalized in the state's congressional system then that's a state's law it's a part of the state's constitution that means that this you know proposal is legalized illegally adopted it means that one should follow this rule as long as one wants to maintain free civil life in that state you understand that right so anyway you know this simply if i ever actually put it simply um there will be penalization if you ever actually converse or you know, just playing rifle or pistol into a semi-automatic weapon or just simply an automatic weapon, then that would eventually cost you hefty money or you could even actually put into jail. You could be behind bars. There could be consequential events, right? Because many of the states are really, literally criminalize these kind of behaviors, right? But Colorado... Um, it's not really that kind of a state, right? Uh, she didn't actually go deeper into that, but I know she actually mentioned one thing very clear. Colorado has a lenient policy on gun regulations, right? Because in a state like New York, or not just actually New York State, but you know, as, as, um, I'm not really so sure whether that is New York State or New York City, but I'm really 100% certain it could be New York, right? If you actually live in New York, to simply actually allowing to have a gun inside your home is pretty much fine, but that's also very tough to be done. You need to actually overcome a high bar, reach a high bar to ever ob obtain that kind of a license. But it's almost impossible for you to actually have a concealed weapon license. You know the distinction. In in the Big Apple, it's almost impossible for you to obtain a gun license to host or house any weapon inside of your study's drawers, right? If you really have a, your study room, then underneath the desk, there will be a flight of uh, drawers or chest of drawers, right? But inside the drawers, there will be you know, a, a rifle hidden, right? That's also very tough. But you know what's what's what is more tough? I mean, what is tougher? What is more difficult than that is to somehow actually you know obtain a license to carry the weapon inside your jacket whenever you go somewhere because you think you could actually be killed by someone. You need to actually carry a weapon to self-defense yourself. This is almost impossible. It's 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 a much much tougher. And it's a, probably the most difficult thing you can ever do in New York, unless you're like, you know, a big shot in a big wig running the financial institution in Wall Street. There will be almost no chance for you to actually have that kind of a license, the concealed weapon license. That's really true. New York, as far as I know, New York City is the toughest place to ever obtain that. Yeah. And gun regulation laws are definitely tougher and stricter and more astringent and more strict. You can actually say both ways, stricter and more strict.
but a tougher means tougher. <laughs> yeah, I don't really need to think twice about it, but I just mispronounced it, so I wanted to rectify that. Because, you know, I feel so annoyed by these people who are making loud noises. I don't fucking want to hear that. But let me be very clear about three points. I do not really need to think twice about any of the messages without even context. I'm not, I don't really need to have a pre-information ahead of time. It's really fine. These are really the breaking news that are coming out of certain sources. I mean, these remarks are the breaking news. These words are right now dominating airwaves with no pre-recognition withheld by me. I'm completely unknown to the circumstances. Oh, but it's really fucking annoying. Can you fucking hear that? It's really annoying. Can you fucking actually remain shut off? I don't like my neighbors so badly. Oh, I want to kill them. They're fucking annoying. How in the first place they were so loud? I don't really need to prepare for this, but I'm actually very much agitated. I, in the first place, speak better and listen better in English, you know. I just actually made a certain type of rectification, which would eventually disparage the quality of my speaking. Because I really don't want to avoid, I don't want to avoid this type of suspicions that are there. They are real. Because they sometimes actually said so many bad things behind my back. Oh, she actually softened the pronunciation. Just simply wanted to, I mean, she just simply wanted, wanted you know, if that's a problem, wanted, I said wanted, then they would never get it. I don't really need to think about any of these pronunciations, which are really driving me crazy. But let me actually say this one. Eventually, they're all really the same thing. Number one, you know, when Julian, Julian Cayenne actually said that there should be thorough probe into his history with the justice system and the judicial branch whether he has been registered in the judiciary system or law enforcement. That's really the thingy. Number two, um, there should be you know, a more of an investigation into the venues that would have allowed him to obtain the weapons. Colorado is relatively, the st I mean, Colorado is the state that practices relatively lenient policy on gun possession and gun control. That's really the reason why there could be certain loopholes that would eventually open the door to this type of a s mentally unstable. Yeah, he could have obtained a gun much e easily just because actually he actually had a state in Colorado. That's a possible. Those we need to at least, you know, um, reconstruct the venues that might have allowed him to gain this weapon. That's the real the question. Number three, any type of profiler just should actually launch a thorough investigation into his social hotline. They need to interview his relatives. They also need to at least have a sit down with the, you know, many people who are actually part of his life regularly. You know, those type of uh, intimate vis-a-vis -vis interviews are unnecessary. Because, you know, he could have said something or he could have even slipped off something that might be suggestive of a possible crime that was already in store by him before, that was already premeditated by him before, right? So we need to actually know that, you know, this was premeditated or he actually decided to do so at the last minute, at the 11th hour, he was so pissed off by something, so he decided to... He decided, I mean, and that's a real big problem. I said he decided. In the first place, I said he decided, but I'm actually repeating this because I was a skeptical of your listening ability or your far-fetched suspicion that I was unaware of this type of a liaison or conjugation. I mean, so I have to always, you know, enunciate them once more. Not because I've been actually confused, but I'm actually worried to hell I'm worried to death when it comes to, you know, making the conjugation choices fully heard by those skeptics who are always picking up on me for nothing. Let me actually repeat this one. We really need to actually, you know, um, let those people inside his inner circle be heard. Because, you know, he could have premeditated ahead of time. He could have actually have at least, you know, pre-planned this or mapped this out beforehand, right? Or 
maybe on that day he really had a bad hair day so he wanted to bear arms to harm someone instantaneously at the 11th hour that could be possible right anything can be actually improvised by this kind of a mentally unstable person that's really the argument so we actually have to dig deeper we're not actually undermining anyone's civil liberties but we have to actually reconstruct and rebuild the mindset of this mindset and the attitude of this perpetrator so we can actually understand his criminal intent that could have been possessed by him at some point in a better sense we need to elucidate many of murky issues that might have led him to this drastic decision that eventually killed 10 people that's what has been said i don't fucking need to think twice about it but ellison camarada didn't really actually you know what clarify the timeline so you know he just actually you know according to her he killed you know some people in the parking lot where you park your car and he actually killed some people inside the grocery store a grocery store but i cannot actually you know put down a firm commitment to this timeline i have to actually you know dig deeper i have to actually you know read more newspaper articles or i have to at least watch this you know coverage from the get-go so i would never be blamed for being mistaken right so you know that's the real thing i don't really want to actually be accused of being misheard even when i was not at all actually not to this kind of key components right that's a fucking crazy right they always blame me for something they always blame me for something that i have never heard of that's a problem that's really the reason i adopted the system you fucking actually wanted this clip together with me i had a no pre-existing understanding i was not at all having any preconceived ideas about this now you and i watched this together and i'm going to deliver a message to you this will be a le- recap then, have I been missing anything? Do you really think I have to think twice about any of these spoken English? Do you really think I have to actually move them over or regurgitate them? I mean, these pieces of news or these remarks coming from experts or pundits, pundits or moderators. Do I have to think twice about them? That's really the question at stake. I would actually perform far better in English than in Korean if there was any breaking news. Fuck you, asshole. I have to study German.